and welcome to today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. I am Inkan Agonwa. On today's episode, we meet Oba Festus Oluwale, the Olu of Igbeni, as he highlights the contributions of core members in his community. He speaks fondly of the trees planted around his palace by core members and the national flag core members hoisted in front of his palace. Let us meet Oba Oluwale. The community here is called Igbe. And Igbe community is the largest community in Egba land in terms of land and inhabitants. It's a very rich uh, land. Uh, Igbe, we say, is a gateway to Ogun State if you are coming from Lagos. And of course, Igbe is the landlord of Ogun State in terms of where the government house is built. The National Youth Corps, uh, which we say NYSC, was established in May, I think May 22nd, 1973, and uh, by the federal government of Nigeria. And anything federal government put down, we should all rally around it uh, to make it to succeed. Um, in the, my own effort to assist, to partner, to support the government, uh, I have been housing the uh, coppers here. And let me tell you, the coppers here, they have been doing wonderfully. Uh, when I see how they behave here, uh, I, I am impressed. One of the set of the coppers, they are the one that erected the uh, uh, national flag in front of my palace. Uh, they, 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 they planted trees around this palace. If you look around, you see the, the trees they have planted. They are wonderful. And in order to reciprocate, that is why I said in my mind that I should support these coppers, particularly the work of the federal government. Uh, I can remember sometimes yeah, when I was uh, celebrating my birthday here, uh, they supported me, and that's why I put down a program which the coppers who participate. Uh, they participated in the program, and we have to say, you have to choose the first, second, third of their performances in the program. So uh, I, I donated a, the price. The first price was a, a laptop. And the second price was cash of 50. And the third price was 40,000, I can't I can remember rightly. What I see the government doing is for them to, be, to live on their own in future. Don't depend on the white collar job, right? Uh, there are so many things to do without the white collar job. Uh, white collar job, of course, we, have, we did it, and uh, we see how it is to set having your own business. Uh, if you have your business, uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, manage it to your satisfaction. And that's what, what you are being taught here on this uh, program, uh, to be able to live on themselves in future. Some have been there, Taking part in tailoring, learning how to how to how to sew. Some have been uh, learning how to whip their their hair. Some have been practicing uh, farming. 
poultry in so many areas. Fishery. And they have been doing very well in this type of area. Recently, I have built uh, an office for the use of the coppers uh, to assist my state government, which is a good state, to assist my local government, which is a local government, and to assist my community also, and to put my own community on the limelight. The people of Moria as a whole has been very nice to us. They've been very generous. They've been accommodating, most especially the palace. The Oba is a very nice person. He's a father to us all. He, he goes around, he makes sure we're making progress in our CDS activities. He gives advice when necessary. He built our office for us. He built a toilet for the coppers to use while we're having our CDS activities. He even makes sure the halls are clean before we come around for our CDS activities. That in itself alone has shown how accommodating they are to us. KBC is so nice to all, all of us here, over here in the community. Ever since um, I've been here, the people, they are heartwarming, like they receive us with a whole lot. They value coppers, let me use that word. They really value coppers a lot and um, they have been so good in the aspects of food and the rest of it. Yes. <laughs> then also the Oba is very accommodating. Is accommodating and sometimes usually go around to like check up on us, hope our fairism and the whole rest of it. I think it's a great thing that um, I will commend on. Let me salute the courage of those people who have set down this uh, scheme. It's a scheme well said and a scheme well done. My son, who was a copper, uh, about four years ago, he married an Igbo in DG. And he's now uh, working at Uyo, he's not working in Ogu State, which means because of the interaction. Because when he was a copper, he didn't serve here in Ogu State. He served in that environment. That's why it came about somebody to marry. Your action should continue within us. And if you have that one continues, there will be no fight. There will be a, a peaceful relationship uh, and, and so on and so forth among us. I pray that this type of uh, cause will continue. But the, I'm talking to the federal government that they should not allow this system to die, that this system should continue. Words of wisdom from Oba Festus Oluwole. Thank you, sir. We move on to our next story on Shei Adekunle, an indigene of Ileife in Oshun State and a graduate of geology from the University of Meduguri. He was deployed to Akwaibom State back in 1991 for his service year. During his service year, he discovered tailoring and since then has pursued a thriving career in fashion designing. He is today the CEO of Vodi Tailors, the leading fashion brand in Nigeria. Let us meet him. <laughs> My name is Sheyi Adekunle. I'm from Ileife, Oshun State. I'm an ESCO member. I started my business during the NYCA when I was serving in Akwaibom State. Thank you. Welcome to my world.
study uh, geology from the prestigious University of Maiduguri, and I graduated in the year 1999. Uh, before then, I had my primary and secondary school education in Maiduguri, Borno State. In the camp, we met a lot of uh, people from different cultures, different backgrounds. I made friends, and uh, quite uh, among the friends was uh, Jida Labi. He used to present with one of the prominent uh, TV stations. Then I met uh, so many guys today. Some of them are highly placed in the society. Some of them work in the oil and gas company, and some of them are into mainstream politics today. Akwaibo uh, State, um, was just developing, and it was during the Governor Victor Atta administration. They were just coming up. It was quite exciting. They had good food, variety, and um, good people, very accommodating. And um, I know some of my friends that stayed behind. I know some of my friends that got married there, because uh, Akwaibon then was too tempting for you to leave. It was too, too tempting. I must say that again. But for me, I thank God that I, I made friends that eventually supported me. They are more like families, and then uh, they didn't make me feel uh, they didn't they didn't make me feel homesick because I was accepted wholeheartedly and I was loved, and I'm glad that uh, I was posted to Akwaibom State. <laughs> I left Akwaibom. I left on the day we were passing out, July 8, 2001, the following year. And I took a night bus and I came to Abuja because I already had a friend that was working in Standard Trust Bank. As I then, I have not made up my mind to go into tailoring fully. I just wanted to come to Abuja to seek for greener pasture, as it were then. And I knew that um, a lot of banks were springing up. I saw in Standard Trust Bank, I remember the one on Ademola de Tokumbo, then the one that is UBA now by Amigo Supermarket and I went to meet my friend Salim Mohamed. He saw what I brought, I said, okay, while I was coming, I didn't come empty-handed. I made some shirts hoping that I would meet young people that would buy. And he now said that, uh, but if the shirts were in different pattern, I had stripes, I had checkered, I had all colors. He now said what they wear in the bank was white or sky blue. And I saw the color from what other bankers were wearing. And I told him, okay, I can go back to about that same night. So I went back to about that same night because I already saw an opportunity. And I went to make more shirts in white and sky blue. And I brought them back to Abuja, I think, a week after. Because when you go to a bank, you have to wait on the tailors to finish your product before you bring them back. And then, who flies? Who flies? You know, how much is your capital? I told you my capital was 3,000. So maybe the total uh, worth of what I had then was 50,000 Naira, which is equivalent to $100 today. So I came back with those shirts after a week. And I... As God will have it, the banker started buying, and then gradually we started selling. I would go back, sell, go back, sell, go back. And then I did that for probably a year and a half before I now got my first shop in Gogolada. I think the, God shop, the first shop in Gogolada was, we got this first shop in September 2002. And the cost of rent then for the shop was 30,000 Naira. And I didn't have 30,000 Naira, and I told someone I knew, and I, by name Amana, and I pleaded on him that he should help me stand as a shorty for me, that I have 15,000 Naira, that I was going to pay 15,000 Naira, then the full, that after two weeks, once I've sold, I will pay the balance of 15,000 Naira. Then the man agreed, and that was how I got my first shop, and I celebrated it, it was good, like, this never happened. So I got the first two tailors from Aba, put them in that shop. I would come to town, hustle as they call it, go back at night. So three of us were sleeping in that shop. And today we've been able to employ over 25 graduates that have passed through the same skin that work in this same organization. If you walk through this organization, you will see a lot of graduates. You have the ones that miss second class up at, from all over, from that seed. That was some 20 years ago.
My name is Fumila Yawuni. I'm an ex member. I served 2010-2011. I served in, in Kebi State. And while I was serving, that one year experience was a great time for me because it was a new experience, meeting a lot of people and then doing, you know, it gave me opportunities to do, to discover myself, some things I thought I could not do while I was still with my parents. But while I was serving, I was able to discover that. And when I finished service 2011, I came to Abuja and then I joined Vodi. And since 2011, I've been in Vodi for 10 years. And the 10 years has been a great experience, a great journey for me. Um, working in Vodi has actually brought the best out of me. Working with my boss has been a great experience. He's a great man, a tough man actually, but a great man. He has brought out the best in me. He makes me see the things I thought I could not do. And then I begin to do it myself. While working here for 10 years, for over 10 years, I've been able to get married here. And then I have two kids, two lovely boys. And not just that, Voli has been a blessing. As a company, it has been a blessing to me and to my entire family, not just me alone. And, you know, um, I have a house now in Wuse to courtesy of my boss, a generous man to the core. And, you know, through him, he has gotten me two cars so far. I've been with this organization for seven months, and I must say that the experience is mind blowing. In the last seven months, I can say that what I have achieved is way better than what I've achieved in the last five years of my previous workplace. And um, my boss is really a great person. He wants to see everybody grow. And I'm so happy and glad to be part of this organization. I came here as a front ex, and for my staying here, I've really learned a lot. I'm impressed with myself. I learned from clients, from my boss. I got so many things I do today from what I've gotten I learned from my boss. And yeah, it has really been impacting for me. Like, it has given me the confidence to at least stand out with other tellers out there. Like, they've really improved me here. Like, when it comes to detailing and courts. Because like, tellers in the markets, on our courts here, you can differentiate when you put on our wares. Coming to Vodi to serve, I came and I discovered that fashion was way beyond what I had earlier on imagined. I knew that it was beyond sewing, I knew it was beyond the fabric. So many logic, so many interpretations to it, beyond the way youths out there would just see it. I learned patience here. I'm, I'm not really a so patient person, so to say, but once I came here, I knew that there are stages to these things, and it gave me and have a new to be a much better person when it comes to patients. I learned intelligence, I learned customer service. As a matter of fact, I even learned psychology on how to handle clients. Like every client are different, everybody's different. You have to study them. Some persons might want you to go a lot and you know describe how you want this or why this fabric should be like this. I mean, so many in-depth to it. I've learned creativity. I've learned to know that money does not just come to fly. Like it doesn't fly to meet you. You have to get it. You have to hustle for it. You really have to make sure and at the end of the day, deliver what the customer has asked of. My name is Debbie Jane Archie. I'm from Ecom Local Government here in Cross River State. I went to Tansiang University in Anambra State where I studied mass communication and I was blessed to serve in Taraba State. My place of primary assignment was Taraba Television where I served in the newsroom. And thereafter, that was the opportunity NYC gave to me. My side, that was the skill acquisition I was able to learn back then in CAM, because I started in CAM was fashion and designing. From there, after CAM, I came out and I desired to learn more, to know about it more, because fashion was not just all about sewing, it went so deep and I needed to know more. I registered and I continued. And then I grew up, I grew in it. And when I came out, I, I got to shave body. And the thing is, it's not about the sewing or the clothing, it's what I love. It's something that gives me passion. Now, in fashion, if you don't have passion for it, you will not be able to acquire what you want. Because first of all, you need to have patience to acquire what you really want in fashion. Now, you is serving our advice that you really participate in what gives you joy. If it is in fashion, in painting or whatever, Said is the only opportunity that can grant you that, to learn and have passion for what you do. Now, Nigerian youth, 
the world is really going global. And it's not all about sitting at home or thinking of what kind of job to do. It's about putting your passion in what gives you joy. Now, once you know that this is what gives me joy and you find passion in doing it, then I believe you can be able to get resources from it and then you can make better income. I always say it humorously that I applied to the National uh, Civil Service Commission. I have a number, you know, you apply and then while I applied, I was still working this, on this. Now, for 20 years, I've been expecting them to call me, but maybe they've not gotten to my file up till now. Now, while I was waiting for them, I was doing this. Now, yes, you can apply. But why you apply for a job, try and find something to do. And don't ever underestimate that thing which you're doing. And um, it gave me an opportunity to make money every day. And you not, can never, never underestimate the man that makes money daily. And it doesn't matter um, uh, the amount of money. Before now, if I made a thousand naira, or 5,000 naira daily, I, I celebrated it because I plan on that. And you can't just sit down in the comfort of your parents' house or in the comfort of your home and just think manners will fall from heaven. It's not possible, it's not done that way. Now, uh, it is the SMEs, small and medium scale enterprises and the, the, that come together to build a strong and viable economy. And um, waiting on the government, there's a limit to what the government can do. So as a core member today, first thing I want you to think, don't think the government will solve your problem. The government cannot solve your problem. You have to stand up to the challenge. You have land all over. You can be a farmer. You can go into agri, crop, animal farming. I mean, people are, the population of Nigeria is huge. We cannot even sustain, we cannot even sustain the Nigerian populace talkless of people from other West African countries that love our attire and let us not be in a hurry. It took us 20 years to get here. By 2004, it was difficult for us to pay a rent of 270. That means we've been in the business for three years, but couldn't raise a capital of 270,000 naira, which is going to $500 today. So you start a venture today and you want it to yield profit today. You want it to be big today. It's not possible. You take it one day at a time. If you ask me, one of my motivations today is the life that we impact on a daily basis, the life that has been transformed through us, the people that have worked here and left and gone and started learning business, and they too, they are impacting their world. That is my motivation today. From the humble beginnings, to great successes. What lies in between is hard work, resilience, and dedication. These are values the National Youth Service Corps instills in core members to prepare them for a meaningful and impactful life ahead. We would be right back. The National Youth Service Corps, a call to service, a call to nationhood, Nigerian youths, stand up and embrace this clarion call. Wherever you are posted, accept it, embrace it. Do not harbor any fears because your security is assured. Develop common ties with members of your host communities. You would discover that North, South, East and West, we are all brothers with common ties and a shared destiny as one nation. Do not lobby for preferential posting, for it is unpatriotic and illegal. Report at once to the orientation camp as soon as you are posted and contribute your quota to the overall development of our great nation, Nigeria. The National Youth Service Corps, 
building future leaders. Welcome back. This is where we draw the curtain on today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. I hate to say goodbye, but remember you could always write to us on the online handles displayed on your screens right now, and we would write back. Remember, the safety of core members in our communities is the responsibility of you and I. Until I see you next time, I am Inken Agonwa. Stay safe. <laughs>